Hello, grade four. Let's continue with part two of unit three, lesson one, the Arab Islamic identity and the factors influencing its formation. Objectives differentiate between individual and collective identity and discuss the factors that influence the formation of Arab Islamic identity. So first, let's review the concept of identity. What do we mean by it? Okay, so the concept of identity refers to the group of qualities and behaviors that the individual acquires through the culture, religion, and history of his society. And also included the, in this would be the customs and traditions of his nation, which distinguish him from others. So as mentioned in the previous uh, presentation, identity is uh, referring or reflective of a sense of self. It defines who you are as an Arab Muslim. Now, why is identity important? Because one, it grants the human being originality and distinction. Okay, so we have to know who we are amongst a crowd, okay, or amongst a sea of others, right? We have to be distinct from them or we have to be original. We have to have our own sense of self. And also it frees us or liberates us from dependency and imitation so that we can feel our value and role in life. And at the same time, we would know what we dream about and what we aspire to achieve. So what is the concept of Arab Islamic identity? What makes you an Arab Muslim? Okay, so Arab Islamic identity refers to distinct qualities and private behaviors that came from the history of the Arab nation. It's heritage, okay, meaning what we have inherited from our ancestors or, or from the people who came before us. And also the principles or the teachings of the Islamic religion. So all of this come into play when we talk about Arab Islamic identity. Now we proceed to individual identity versus collective identity, okay? So when you say individual, it refers to that one person. And collective would refer to a collection of people, okay? A whole society. So each society has its own characteristics and distinct identity. The existence of consistency and harmony between the individual identity and the collective identity generates belonging and loyalty. So what the... Um, is explained in here is that if your own identity is in line with the collective identity or the identity of your society, then you would feel belongingness and loyalty to your society, right? So we know that each society, when you say society, you mean group of people, okay? So would have its own characteristics and special kind of identity. There should be harmony, okay, or cooperation, right? Uh, between your identity as a person and also the identity of others around you. So the collective identity becomes severely evident, okay, or can be seen very clearly when communities face hardships because when we face hardships, we know how to work together. So our uh, behaviors, private behaviors, our uh, life values come into play and come into existence, okay? And this causes individual identity and collective identity to melt together. Okay, so in the sense, when we face hardships, we help each other and our identity develops, okay, or improves and melts into each other. Now, how do we preserve and ensure openness to the cultures of other nations? Okay, so preserving the Arab identity does not mean that the Arab individual should seclude or separate himself from the world. Rather, it opts or chooses to benefit, okay, from other cultures, provided that such benefit should not lead to loss of their distinct identity. So we should uh, all remember that it's also important to learn from other cultures as long as what we're learning from other cultures would be consistent with expectations of our society and also principles or teachings of the Islamic faith, so as not to lose our own individual identity. So moreover, nations or countries that seek survival, continuation, and development should be like a deep-rooted tree with branches flying through the heavens. So this is an excellent metaphor to describe why we should be 
uh, open to other cultures at the same time ensure our own uh, preservation of our identity, right? So uh, development should be like a deep-rooted tree. So you should not forget who you are. That's what it means, okay? And uh, that tree should have branches flying through heaven, meaning you should expose yourself to other cultures. You should expose yourself to cultures beyond, right? Because only then would you be able to reflect on your own identity and how distinct you are from others. And also, it's healthy. It's very uh, rewarding to be able to share your culture to others and learn other cultures through others as well. So what are the factors influencing formation of the Arab Islamic identity? There are three factors, but we're going to focus only on one. So we will discuss the other two in the next recorded lesson. So first is the Islamic religion. So how does Islam influence the formation or the makeup of the Arab Islamic identity? So Islam, as we know, is the religion of truth. And moreover, the Islamic behavior is an honest mirror or reflection that shows the principles of the true Islamic religion that gives Muslims pride and dignity. And thus, they have to stick to the Islamic values and principles. So we have to respect whatever we uh, have in terms of faith system and uh, also practice the principles or the teachings of the Islamic religion. So how does it significantly contribute okay, to the formation of Arab Islamic identity? It's evident, of course, through performance of religious rituals and celebrations of feasts. So by participating in the holy month of Ramadan, okay, we are practicing our um, Arab Islamic identity, right? So Muslims fast, perform the optional night prayer, and do good. So in addition to some popular practices that are unique to each of the Arab communities and which form the Arab Islamic identity. So moreover, the whole world witnesses the great occasion of pilgrimage that gathers thousands of Muslims in the sacred house of Allah for performing rituals of pilgrimage that clearly contributes to shaping the aspects of the Islamic identity. So for some of the Arab Muslims, of course, they go to pilgrimage in Mecca in order for them to uh, renew their vows or their oaths in the faith system of Islam and go to the sacred house of Allah. Okay, and also the true Islamic religion has two blessed feasts, the Eid al-Fitr and the Eid al-Adha, okay, which are celebrated by Muslims all over the world through their own rituals that distinguish them from others. Right? So we know that uh, when we talk about these two blessed feasts, we talk about Islam and Muslims in general. Okay, So this clearly contributes to formation or the shaping of the Arab Islamic identity. Thank you for watching this recorded lesson. You can check out more by reading your Catholic history book. I will see you in the next video.